Hello, it's Mr. Thompson here. Um, I'm going to talk you through today how to solve linear equations. This is old grade three, uh, sorry, old grade E, uh, and approximately new grade E. Um, and there's a, I'm going to do three examples, um, and then I've got a question generator which I'll attach but, um, to the description at the bottom where you can practice. But I'll come to all that in a second. Okay. First example. So I have here, uh, it says solve, and then it gives us this equation here. Um, when it asks us to solve, basically it's asking us to find the value of the letter. So in this case the letter is H, that means my, the final line of my equation, uh, sorry, of my workings, needs to be H equals something. Uh, and we want to figure out what that H is. Now, I use something called the funnel method to do this with my classes. So I'm going to start, and it's called a funnel because it kind of looks like this. OK, now uh, what this equation means is it actually means 11 times a number, and we don't know what that number is yet, add 4 equals 37. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get all the h's, uh, all the letters on one side of the equal sign, and all the numbers on the other side. So the thing that's stopping us from having all of the numbers uh, on uh, one side and all the letters on the other at the minute is this plus 4 even though this h has uh, an 11 attached to it, if you like, we call, we refer to this whole thing as, as, a, as a letter. So we want to get rid of this 4, and this is a positive 4. Okay. So what I get my classes to do is I get them to underline or circle or something this plus 4, and we want to get rid of that. So we want to do the opposite, the inverse operation of add 4. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the inverse of add 4 is take away 4. Um, if I was doing the inverse of add 8, it would be take away 8. If I was doing the inverse of minus 4, it would be plus 4, and so on and so forth. Now, the important thing about equations is that whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, so this side we've taken away 4, we also need to do to this side. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take away 4 from both sides. Now, remember I said a second ago that this 11h is referred to as a letter. Okay. We cannot take away 4 from this 11. That's a very common mistake. Um, 11h, take away 4, we can't do that. So this 11h remains as it is. 11h. Now the whole point of us doing this minus 4 was to get rid of this plus 4. So if you think of, if I've got 4, take away 4, I've got nothing left here. Okay. And now we go straight to the equal sign, and we do the same on this side of the equation as well. So 37, take away 4 that's going to leave me with 33. Okay, so remember I said we wanted to get all the letters on one side and all the numbers on the other, we've now done that. So, what we're going to do now, this means 11 times a number, which we're trying to find, equals 33. So to undo this multiplying by 11 and to get to this h equals something, all we're going to do is divide by 11. Okay, and remember, whatever we do to one side of an equation, we have to do over here as well to the other side. So I'm just going to write exactly what we're doing outside. So I've done 11h, split equally between 11 is h. Is when, when we see h, it just means 1h, one lot of h. Now I'm going to do the same on this side, 33 divided by 11 equals 3. This whole thing is our answer. Don't just write... 3 is your answer, it has to be h equals 3, so that's not quite right. Okay, so this is our second example. Uh, in, to, in order to do these sorts of questions, you need to be completely comfortable with uh, both adding and subtracting with negative numbers, but also with multiplying and dividing uh, with negative numbers. Um, just as a quick reminder, I'll write it up here somewhere. If I'm doing a positive number, and I'm either multiplying or dividing by a negative number, my answer will always be negative. And same the other way around, negative times or divide by a positive equals a negative. And then a positive multiplied or divided by a positive will give a positive and a negative timesing or dividing by a negative would always give a negative. Okay, right, so that might, well, that will come in useful. Now let's look back at the original question. So I've got 6p minus 8 
equals negative 20. When I refer to, when I say minus, what I mean is, uh, is take away. And when I say negative, I mean a number that is less than zero. Okay, so that's quite important. So I'm going to start this question exactly the same as we did last time. Uh, I'm going to do a funnel. And I'm going to circle this negative 8. And I want to do the inverse operation. So the inverse of minus 8 would be plus 8. So I do the same on both the left-hand side of the equal sign, but also on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Okay, now remember what I said last time, we cannot add 8 to 6p, so this bit here just stays as 6p. That's got a number, in, that's got a letter in it, sorry, and that's plus 8, so I can't add them together or take them away. Right, now remember the whole point of us doing this plus 8 was to get rid of this negative 8, minus 8. So uh, they kind of cancel each other out, you can cross them out if you want. And then we get to the equal sign. Now this is where people go wrong with adding and subtracting negative numbers. So if I've got negative 20 on my number line, 0 is going to be up here somewhere. A lot of people, when they add 8 to negative 20, come up with the answer of negative 28. That's not quite right because actually what we're doing, when I'm adding I'm going this way, which is actually getting closer and closer to 0. So it's actually negative 12. Okay, negative numbers work the other way around to positive numbers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is this number in front of the p, this means 6 lots of p uh, equals, tw equals negative 12. So to find out what 1 lot of p is, I'm going to divide by the number in front, of the, in front of the letter, in front of the p. Remember, whatever I do to this side, I have to do to this side as well. So 6p split up into 6 parts would just be 1 lot of p. That means just one, but in algebra we don't tend to write that. And then, negative 12 divided by 6. Well, 12 divided by 6 would be 2. But actually, we're doing a negative number divided by a positive, which is why I did all these up here. A negative number divided by a positive will give you a negative answer. So instead of 2, my answer is going to be negative 2. Okay, And that's my answer there. OK, one final example. So here um, I've given you this one, uh, this, this equation here, and I've asked you to solve. Now this question looks slightly more difficult than the previous ones, but actually we can turn it into um, a question that's exactly like the first example in one easy step. OK, now in order to do these questions, you need to be completely um, comfortable with expanding brackets. Um, so if you want to look, have a look through my channel and have a look for the uh, expanding brackets video, um, that would be quite useful. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is uh, we're still going to do our funnel. Okay, but I want you to start with to completely ignore this equals negative, sorry, equals 26. And I'm just going to write everything else over here somewhere. So 2 and then brackets 2s plus 3. Okay. Now remember, when this this means 2 multiplied by everything in this bracket. So whether you use the grid method to expand single brackets, or um, the kind of dodgy eyebrows method, um, it doesn't matter. Okay, Whichever method you prefer. I'm going to use the dodgy eyebrows method. So we're multiplying 2 by 2s. 2 lots of 2s would give me 4s. And then I'm multiplying 2 by not just 3, but positive 3. A lot of people then do 2 plus 3 is 5. No, this just means 2 multiplied by positive 3, Okay, which in this case is positive 6. Okay, So we've now expanded that bracket. Now all we're going to do is back over in our, uh, in our funnel method, I'm, instead, of this, instead of this 2, 2s plus 3, I'm going to write what we've just expanded that, what we've multiplied out the bracket to get, to get 4s, plus 6 equals 26. Now if you notice, this actually just becomes uh, a question like the, ones, like the one we did right at the start. Okay, So we've actually turned this question, that looked quite difficult, into an easier question by expanding the bracket. And now we're not going to ignore that equals, ne negative, equals 26. Sorry. Okay, so now we're going to treat it exactly the same as we did before. I'm going to circle this po positive 6, this plus 6, and I'm going to do the inverse operation of add 6, which is minus 6. And I'm going to do the same to both sides. 
Okay. So again, 4s take away 6, we can't do that, so that just stays as 4s. And then plus 6 minus 6, well that's just nothing, cancels out. 26 take away 6 gives me 20. And then it's simply a case, remember, of dividing by the number in front of the letter. And we're going to do the same to both sides. So 4s divided by 4 just leaves me with s. 20 divided by 4 just leaves me with 5. That is my answer to that question. Okay, so the brackets, although they look a bit confusing, uh, you can actually just change it to something that you, you know how to work with. Okay, so just like some other videos, I've included a question generator so you can go away and practice. The examples I've done correspond to these circle questions, these triangle questions, uh, and these square questions. So, as always, when you open this file, there will be a little yellow box at the top. You need to click Enable Content, otherwise none of the buttons will work. Okay, so what you can do, generate new questions, um, you can show all the answers, uh, you can hide all the answers, um, and then if you just want an answer to one of them, you can click on the question itself and it will reveal them. Um, if you just wanted more of one type of question, you just click on the shape that goes next to it. And also what you can do is, if you just want to focus on one level of difficulty, you can click on these little eyes at the side there to hide the questions and show them again. Okay, but remember, to make all those buttons work, you must click Enable Content. Okay, so that gives you an opportunity to uh, have a rewatch the video if you need to, uh, go away and practice some of the questions. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope that's been useful, and until next time, I'll see you later.